he was going back to Israel. He had hundreds of instruments. He's a professional musician. And he didn't want to pack them all up and take them back to Israel. So he put them up on Craigslist, Myers saw it, and we went over there, and the drums come from him, these, these things right here. Much of what's here is we bought out his collection. Uh -huh. And I cracked the joke about, you know, who the most wicked man in the Bible is? Yes. Scratch your head. I don't know. Well, Moses. He broke all ten commandments at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> that man went, how would he look like, Myra, when I said that? He got like this. He was somewhat less than amused. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he, Myra said, you insulted him. I looked at him. Well, I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. He said, well, I was just waiting for the, the levity to settle down. You know, I said, it's a joke. I apologize. I surely did not mean the insult. He got, he was starting to get angry. Uh, Darren, you know, indicated Moses was the most wicked. <laughs> did you tell him it was a play on words? Did you at least it's a joke. He understood it once I got to it. You know, I mean, he understood the joke. But when I said Moses was the most wicked man, he went. <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> you have to, you have to know, huh? You have to know when it's appropriate to sow your, yeah. to sow your corn. So, so I learned that today, that day, don't insult Moses in front of Jewish people. Okay. But here Jesus was saying, look, you, you, you trust in Moses? He, he spoke to me. I supersede Moses. But you won't see me. Okay. Cursed is he who hangs on the tree. Deuteronomy 21, 23. His body shall not remain overnight on the tree. Really? But you shall surely bury him that day so that you do not defile the land which the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance. For he who is hanged is a curse of God. This is why the Pharisees were so anxious to get Jesus down off the cross. They knew what this said right here. And they wanted to break his legs, but they didn't get they didn't get that done. If they had done that, that would have broken one of these prophecies. Hmm. But wow. He'd already given up his spirit. I think they were trying to do that intentionally. No, I don't think so. I mean it's like oh, okay. when Caiaphas yeah. spoke up, well that's one of the ones we'll get to. Caiaphas, the one who ordered Jesus to be killed, was a prophet. He didn't know it at the time. We'll cover that in a little bit where he says, you know, it's better that one man die than the whole nation. And it said he, he didn't realize it, but he was prophesying. Okay? okay? He spoke out. See, these things come out, and the people don't realize what they're saying. They're prophesying. And we, when we look back on it, in hindsight, we can see. We can see in hindsight all these 300 some things about Jesus that came true. Because we can look back and we see the tapestry now. We see the whole whole thing based on what we saw here. We can look back and understand what we're looking at back here. Jesus fills full the Old Testament. And God said, Revenge is mine, thus saith the Lord. Well, Jesus dismissed his spirit. But what I'm getting to say is, Mr. Caiaphas, the decree that? put Jesus to death Caiaphas was skinned alive <coughs> yes <coughs> the other one it was Caiaphas and who was the other one Annas wasn't that his father huh? Annas Pontius Pilate huh Pontius. no Pilate too but there's three of them there's Caiaphas <coughs> and Ananias Ananias yeah Ananias okay. ran he was crucified on Golgotha by Pilate Real. Yes. Wow. Caiaphas was skinned alive by the pilot after Jesus because they, they got into conflicts and he got he got up he was tired of them. Then Pilate was called to Rome and he was put to death by Caesar. Put Pilate to death. All three of them got their just desserts. God dealt with them. Revenge is his, God said. They didn't get away with that for free. Okay. That's, that's a little extra there for three years more. They got their just desserts. And they also have 
an upcoming event in eternity when they're going to get to stand in front of the man they crucified. Not only that, they have to bow down and acknowledge Jesus. Yes. And then they're going to have to go to a, a, a long, fiery place. But they're going to have to stand in front of that man. Caiaphas and Ananias and Pilate. Created the universe. They're going to have to give an account to Gosh, we didn't know it was you, God. I told you I was. I told you I was. I even said before Abraham was, I am. I told you I was. You just didn't want to hear it. Why? Because the Jews to this day are not looking for the suffering servant. They're looking for the conquering king. Right. And that's who they were looking for. That's why they didn't accept Jesus. They didn't see the suffering servant that we're going to see here in Isaiah 53. It was going to come first. They, they missed it. They're blinded. Okay. Going on about hanging on the tree overnight. And who lives hanging on the trees and curses. Galatians 3, 10 to 14. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who does not continue in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no one is justified by the law in sight of God is evident. For the just shall live by faith. If you don't understand about us not being under the law anymore, just read this right here. Yet the law is not of faith, but Quote, the man who does them shall live by them. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on the tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Gentiles get brought in. We get brought in. What you talked about, the Gentiles are going to be left because of this. He took the curse. He satisfied the requirements of the law, so we don't have to. That right there, that's all you need to read. When there are tons more while we, we're not bound by the law, under the law, because Jesus satisfied it. In this one section of scripture, it speaks of David's seed, the Son of God, and David's house established forever. Now, who is David's seed? Jesus. Is it a bag full of corn he's going to go out and Children. the ground? Children. You didn't say seeds. I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's David's seed. Is seed. Still huh? seed is still plural. Okay. Jesus. Jesus. Let's but. see. <laughs> Second Samuel 7, chapter 7, verses 12 to 16. When your days are fulfilled and you rest with your fathers, I will set up your seed after you who will come from your body and I will establish his kingdom. Not their kingdom. It's not plural, it's specifically from person. His kingdom. He shall build a house for my name and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father and he shall be my son. If he commits iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the blows of the sons of men. But my mercy shall not depart from him. As I took it from Saul, whom I removed from before you, and your house and your kingdom shall be established forever before you. Your throne shall be established forever. All right. Jack. So, pardon me. Yes. Good question. Yes. Is that what it means that he's going to restore the tabernacle of David? Yes. Yes. All right. That's the prophecy. Here's Matthew 1.1. 1, 1, the book of genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. He's David's son. Okay. What? What? What, what did you just say? Matthew 1 is the Matthew genealogy 1. of Joseph. The book of genealogy of Jesus Christ. Oh. The son of David. The son of Abraham. Okay. 
He's Abraham's seed, and he's David's seed. Okay? Luke 1, 31 through 33. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great. He will be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. And these all hit the nail on the head, what was said in Samuel. 2 Samuel 23, 2-4. Which is speaking of the rock and the light of the morning. 2 Samuel 23, 2 through 4. The Spirit of the Lord spoke by me, and his word was on my tongue. Hmm. Does that make it pretty, spell that pretty quickly? The Spirit of the Lord spoke by me, and his word was on my tongue. Do you think that was the Holy Spirit inspired, what he's about to say? The God of Israel said, the rock of Israel spoke to me. He who rules over men must be just, ruling in the fear of God, and he shall be like the light of the morning when the sun rises, a morning without clouds, like the tender grass springing out of the earth by clear shining after rain. 1 Corinthians 10.4 All ate the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. Revelation 22, 16. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. Jesus' flesh is not going to rot. Psalm 16, 10. For you will not leave my, my soul in shield, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. <clears throat> Acts 2.31 He foreseeing this spoke concerning the resurrection of the Christ, that his soul was not left in Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. It was fulfilled. Christ came out of the grave. His flesh didn't rot away, but he, got, he came out of there with a new body. Jesus is the shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Where's that? Psalm 23. There you go. We all know that, right? John 10, 11. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. He's accused by false witnesses. Psalm 27, 12. Do not deliver me to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and such as breathe out violence. Matthew 26, verses 16 and 61. Now the chief priests, the elders, and all the council sought false testimony against Jesus to put him to death but found none. Even though many false witnesses came forward, they found none. But at last, two false witnesses came forward and said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. Now, what was Jesus talking about? His body. His body. His body, right? John knew that. He later tells that. They, you know, they, know he's, they, they missed it. Let me tell you about this false testimony, false witnesses. In Israel, their judicial system, if there is going to be a trial, and the chance is that a person is going to be convicted of murder and be sentenced to death, there are requirements according to their system that must be abided by. Number one is, there have to be three judges. Three judges, not one, three judges. At the same time? At the same time. Wow. Sitting there on the bench. Wow. Three judges. Wow. Okay? Is this civil? This is criminal. 
Oh, it was criminal, criminal court. Criminal court. Wow. Then three three judges. judges. Right. Yes. Three judges. And if that man's going to be sentenced to death, it has to be a unanimous decision. Oh. Wow. Of those three judges. Unanimous. So there's no jury system over there. It's the judge. If it's just the judge judges, yes. Okay. Wow. All right. When you are a judge and you are sworn in as a judge, you swear this, that if you sentence somebody to a crime with a, a set punishment and later it's found out that he's not guilty, you have to serve that sentence. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's wow. Real. That is, wow. Think about that. Yeah. If I sentence you to death mm. and then later it's found out you are not guilty, I get put to death. Wow. The judges. So you think that's a heavy weight on you to make sure you make a good oh, decision? Oh yeah, that's a very good That you're not going to make a frivolous decision? Mm. That you're not just going to do any old thing? You're not going to be broad? <clears throat> no. Bye. That's serious. It is. Okay? The trial cannot be held at night. It must be held during the day. Once all of the evidence has been presented, there must be three days separation between the end of the evidence and a decision. Wow. Must be. Can't be right now. Three days later. And the court, their the court's bent. Their leaning is towards mercy. Wow. Not not justice and severe punishment, but their bent is to be towards mercy. If someone is con charged with murder and they confess to it, capital punishments taken off the table. Okay? In this instance, Jesus' trial was held at night. There were no judges. They brought forth, they were compelled to bring forth, wit they brought forth false witnesses. Was that bent towards mercy? No. no. It's all the, no. Yeah. the whole thing was a kangaroo court. Yes, it was. Ridiculous. Hell, and I, they sought false witnesses. They didn't wait three days to make a decision. He was decided that night, and the next day he's put to death. Yep. That violated the three days. Okay. He was compelled to testify. Mm -hmm. Tell us, Jesus. Tell us yourself. No, you don't have to testify against yourself. They were compelling him. That's a violation. All these things that they did violated every tenet of, of what the rules and regulations are for, the, for a, a criminal trial. Well, and then they beat okay. him after in the first place. Oh, yeah, the they Pharisees beat him, spat on him. him. That was all violations. Yeah, that was a major violation. Hey, all of it. All of it. It was, the most, it was the most outrageous trial in the history of mankind. Except for O.J. Simpson, probably. But <laughs> no. <laughs> a kangaroo court as far as a rigged court making a decision a false decision about like the two uh, impeachments of Trump those are just as kangaroos to be this is the worst because the man's put to death over their decision Okay, that was all extra for free. Okay, um, he commit, Jesus committed his spirit to God. Psalm 31 5. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord God of truth. Luke 23 46. And when Jesus had cried out with a loud voice, he said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his life. All Jesus' friends fled. Psalm 31 11. I am a reproach among my enemies, but especially among my neighbors, and am repulsive to my acquaintances. Those who see me outside flee from me. Zechariah 13 9. Awake, O sword, against my shepherd, against the man who is my companion. Says the Lord of hosts, strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. And I will turn my hand against the little ones. Matthew 26, 31. 
Then Jesus said to them, All of you will be made to stumble because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. In Mark 14, 15, then they all forsook him and fled. Betrayed by a friend. Psalm 41, 9. Even my own familiar friend in whom I trusted, who ate my bread, has lifted up his heel against me. Huh? So he where is he? Has lifted his heel up against me? What? Okay, what's that mean? Lifting your heel up against somebody? That's an idiom. Yes. It's an idiom. It means you're a traitor. Mm -hmm. That's what it means. Yeah, it's a traitor. When you lift your heel up against somebody, you're a traitor. The Bible's full of idioms. And see, we, we, we miss it. We don't realize it. Anytime you read something and it doesn't quite make sense to you, right. you better start digging a little deeper. Right. Mm -hmm. Try to find out what does this really mean. Right. It's because it, the Bible's full of it. Right. Idioms, and we, we miss it. It's 2,000 years old. It's, it's a little well, but, well, like I said, if... Well, like here, even today, if I'm speaking to Andrea and we're having a discussion, and there's a little Chinese man from China standing beside me, and I go to Andrea, look, go, my grandpa kicked the bucket. And you go, well, Jack, I'm so sorry about that. Yes. The man here, Chinese man, goes back to China and go, funny thing in America, man kicked bucket and everybody cry. Because <laughs> <laughs> they don't get it, see? They don't realize it's an idiom. Okay? It's, it, it can happen today. All, all the things that are within our culture that are idioms are not necessarily idioms that are in Chinese culture, and vice versa. They have a bunch of them too that we don't have, right? Surely they do. They have idioms. And in John thirteen twenty one, a couple of verses later, when Jesus had said these things, he was troubled in the spirit and testified and said. Most assuredly, I say to you, one of you will betray me. Or this is the fulfillment of um, an additional uh, fulfillment of that scripture that his friends are turn away. His resurrection, Psalm 49, 15. But God will redeem my soul from the power of the grave, for he shall receive me. Mark 16, 6. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You see Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified, but he is risen. He is not here. See the place where they lay. He's gone. He ascended and he gave gifts to men. Psalm 68, 18. You have ascended on high and you have led captivity captive. <clears throat> you have received gifts among men, even from the rebellious, that the Lord God might dwell there. Luke 24, 51. Now it came to pass while he blessed them that he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. In Ephesians 4, 7 through 8, but to each one of us grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. Okay. Now, if you want, you can all turn to Isaiah 53. Everybody get your Bible out, because you're all going to help. In this one chapter, there are twelve verses. And in those twelve verses, there are thirty-eight prophecies in one chapter. And he said seven how many times? Five times seven is 35. Five. So more than five times the odds in this one chapter is this right here. One in 10 to 17 times five in this one chapter. Well, all the odds, I mean, not just in that one chapter, but in that one book, how many prophecies are there about? There's over 300. Yeah. But I'm talking about this one chapter. Right. One, in that Twelve one verses. Book, Isaiah. There's like. Oh, Isaiah. Oh, Isaiah. Yeah. It's full. Yeah. It's full of them. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's yeah. that's the amazing thing. Yeah. Is Isaiah is full. I tell you of what. It. 
Go to Isaiah 7:14. Yes, sir. And read for us. Okay, let me get there. Read it. Okay. Therefore, the Lord Himself. Oh, oh, this. Oh. Therefore, the Lord Himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. A virgin. Mm-hmm. Going to give birth to a son. Mm-hmm. Okay. Virgin, female, and a son, not a daughter. Specific. A virgin. And the son. Okay. And call his name Emmanuel, which means what? God with us. God with us, right? Right? So, that's specific. That is a slice of bread. That's not a bread crumb. Okay? All right. That word sign? Mm-hmm. I'm going to give you a sign. Oh, you're going to go where I... Oh, yeah, you're going there. Yes. the Hebrew word oath. Mm-hmm. And it's cons- comprised of three Hebraic letters. Aleph, Vav, and Ta. Aleph is the first <coughs> letter of the alphabet. Mm-hmm. Okay. I will give you a sign. The word sign is the Hebrew word oath. O-T-H. It's comprised of three a break uh, letters of the alphabet Aleph, Vav, Tav. Aleph is the first letter of the alphabet, Tav is the last letter of the alphabet. We learned earlier when I discussed this with you all mm-hmm. that Aleph can be the single letter that represents God. So we're going to say God. Vav is a nail. Yep. A spike. It's a nail. Like that. Tav is two cross sticks. God nailed the cross. Is the word sign. Hmm. Right there in, in their face. Right there under their nose. The sign is crucifixion of Christ. Right there in Hebrew. Mm. That's in just one verse. No. That's just one more, word. Can you get any more specific than that? That's one word. One word. Along with virgin and son. And that one word sums up the Bible. I mean, it sums up everything. God nailed the cross. That's everything. Right there. In one word. That, oh, oh, my. Wow. Mm. You know, you just don't make this up. Mm-mm. You don't just... Man couldn't have done this. Mm-mm. The intelligence that put all this together is way beyond our comprehension. Okay. Shelby? My phone's not working right. Oh! Debbie? What? Did you turn to Romans 15, 18, please? Okay. Jeffrey, Luke 2 7. Okay. What? 15, 18? Luke, uh, oh, that's me. What, I mean, what's the verse? Luke, Romans 15, 18. Okay. This is in the. In the Link to Isaiah 53 1. Okay. Um, okay, so Debbie, you got Romans Roman 15. 15 8, and yes. Jeffrey, Luke 2 7. <clears throat> Andrea, Philippians 2 7. Yes, sir. Uh, got your Bible there, Chester. Okay. Luke 4 28. 
Lucas, you got a Bible? Who's got a Bible back there? All right. Then um, Luke's 1941. All right. I just hold on to that. I'm going to read the whole thing, then we're going to come back. This is Isaiah 53. I'm going to read it all. Who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, as a root out of dry ground. He has no form or comeliness, and we and when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised, and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But his, was, he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, we have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, Yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before his shears was silent. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who will declare his generation? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people he was stricken. And they made his grave with the wicked, but with the rich at his death, because he had done no violence. Nor was any deceit in his mouth, Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. When you make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the labor of his soul and be satisfied. By his knowledge my righteous servant shall justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will divide him a portion with the great and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Okay. Who has believed our report? Romans 1518. For I would not dare say anything except what Christ has accomplished through me to make the Gentiles obedient by word and deed. Spoken by Paul. Okay. And to whom the arm of the Lord has been revealed. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant. Luke 2.7. 2.7. 